Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1060, Trigonometry for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In lecture 23, we're going to finish off our unit in our unit seven about solving trigonometric equations. Um, in this lecture, though, 23, we're going to focus on situations where the angle in play might be something like 2 theta or 3 theta or 4 theta. Basically, if we change the period, because after all, putting the coefficient from the angle changes the period. You know, 2 theta cuts the period in half, 3 theta cuts it in a third, 4 theta changes it by a factor of 4, right? If we change the period, how does that affect the final answer? And it does have a big effect because after all, trigonometric solutions repeat themselves over its domain. And so if you change the period, that changes the frequency in which solutions repeat. And so you might have more, more or less solutions based upon that period change. So special care must be taken when there is a period change to a trigonometric function. So let's look at two examples in this video here where not a lot's going on other than that period change. Let's find all the solutions for cosine 2 theta equals the square root of 3 over 2. And we're going to solve this in degrees right here. Now, ignore the angle for a moment. We're really just trying to think of when does cosine equal square root of 3 over 2. This would happen in the first quadrant because it's positive. It would also happen in the fourth quadrant because, again, the ratio is positive. In the first quadrant... Cosine is equal to root 3 over 2 at 30 degrees. But that's only in the first quadrant, like in, in, in a single rotation. If we go from 0 to 360, you'll notice here that there's no constraint on the domain here. So we want all possible solutions. So we could take 360. We could also take 390 uh, because 360 plus 30 is coterminal to 30. So we could add any multiple 360 here. So we're going to slap on a 30 degrees plus 360K. That's if we get the solution from the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, uh, excuse me, in the fourth quadrant, we're looking for the angle that references 30 degrees, which is 360 take away 30. So that would be 330 degrees, all right? Um, in which case, it's not just 330 degrees. Um, it's also like negative 30 degrees. Um, it's anything coterminal to 330 degrees. So we have to throw in a... Uh, 360k in there as well. So we're looking for the general solution. So far, all of that's great. We never have used the period change whatsoever until this moment. Once we have the general solution, ignoring the period change, now we're going to consider the period because um, we're trying to solve for theta, not for 2 theta. So we have to divide the left-hand side by 2 so we get a theta. But we have to divide the right-hand side by 2 as well, for which how, how division works here, we distribute on the 30 degrees and onto the 360 degrees. So you'll notice that we actually get theta equals 30 degrees cut in half is 15 degrees. But we also have to take 360k and divide that by 2, and we get 180k. And we do that for the second part as well. 330 degrees cut in half is 165 degrees. But then the 360k gets also cut in half, and so we end up with 180k like so. And so then we still have these representatives of solutions like 15 degrees represents us the general solution so does 165 but the period has also been changed right we have 180 degrees and as our period now right and that makes sense if you had two theta of course as inside your function which we do right here that two that coefficient of two which we called b in the past that would change the period to be two pi over two which is one pi radians, or since we're working in degrees, this would be 180. So this number right here is the new period, while 360 was the standard period, the old period. Now, and so, so we see that solutions will show up more frequently. Consider the graph right here of y equals cosine of 2x, uh, where the x-coordinates right here and the y-axis is right there, right? Uh, because the graph is now 180 degrees periodic, uh, we see that it, one complete cycle occurs from 0 to 180 degrees. So you get one solution right here at 15 degrees, and you get another solution here at 165 degrees. But for the next interval, if we went up to 360, we, we go from 180 to 360 like so, we end up with a solution right here. We also end with, get a solution right there. So if we had changed the problem, if we had changed the problem and we're like, hey, we don't want just any solutions. We just want that theta is between 0 degrees 
but less than 360 degrees. So if that was the stipulation there, how does that change things? Well, you get 15 degrees, you get 165 degrees, but then you get the next one, right? The next one would be 15 degrees plus 180. You also get 165 degrees plus 180 because that second period uh, would show up before 360. Uh, and so we have to compensate for those as well. So you get 15 degrees plus 180 degrees, of course, which is 195. And then you get 165 plus 180 degrees, which is 345. Like so. And so this is the thing you have to be very cautious about, that when you change the period, it changes the, the representatives of the general solution, but it also changes the period of the general solution. So they show up more frequently in this case. So you have to compensate for that. Or if you were asked, what are the solutions in a certain domain, like 360, we have to be very careful that we pay attention to the period. That's what one has to be careful about when you change the period here. Let's do another example. Let's find all the solutions to tangent of 3x equals 1. And we're going to do this one in radians. Well, what does tangent equal 1? Well, the, the standard period for tangent, I should mention, is equal to pi. It's not 2 pi. And so because of this right here, b equals 3, we see that the period is going to change to be pi over 3 because uh, you divide that by 3. So it repeats itself every pi thirds. So when you, we'll get to that in a second, when you solve tangent equals 1, tangent equals 1 in the first quadrant when sine and cosine are the same thing that happens at 45 degrees or pi pi fourths here. You also get in the second quad, uh, the third quadrant, excuse me, um, the reference there. But the general solution would be 3x equals pi fourths plus pi k, like so. Because so, again, for tangent and cotangent, the standard period is pi radians or 180 degrees. For sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant, the standard period is 360 degrees or two pi radians. So for, for tangent, you do need to have that pi k right here. And you don't have to worry about the angle in the third quadrant, uh, which of course in the third quadrant, pi fourths plus pi, that's gonna give you the five pi fourths. That's the angle in the third quadrant that we're thinking of. This already incorporates all of that. So we have to divide by three. So we divide by three, divide by three, and we see that the general solution would be x equals pi twelfths plus pi thirds k. Well, you'll notice pi thirds is the is the change, the modified period for tangent of 3x like so. And so when it comes to this, it's the general solution is actually not so bad. You just make sure you throw in the period and divide the period by whatever that coefficient change is. But what if, right, this is actually the tricky part, what if they ask us that x needs to be less than 2 pi but greater than 0? So it's like in one rotation of the circle, um, what do we get? All right, well, in that situation, we're definitely going to get pi 12s right? But we would also get pi twelfths plus a multiple of pi thirds. We'd also get pi twelfths plus two pi over three, so two multiples of that. Because after all, pi thirds happens, uh, that, that, that's going to get us up to pi, right? We need to keep on going. So the thing is, since we cut the period in thirds, it's going to repeat itself three times as we complete one period. But again, we want to go up to two pi. We also would need pi twelfths plus pi, 3 pi thirds. Uh, we need pi twelfths plus 4 pi thirds. We also need pi twelfths plus 5 pi thirds. And you could add those fractions together to simplify them. But the point is, as you go from 0 to 2 pi, there would be six solutions in all, as opposed to the standard uh, tangent, which would have two solutions from 0 to 2 pi. Where did six come from? Well, we take the two solutions from the standard tangent and then we times that by three because we cut the period in by a third thus raising the frequency by a factor of three uh, so with finding the general solution when you change a period is actually pretty nice because you have to just change the period in the general solution but if it wants you to enumerate all the answers from zero to two pi you have to be meticulous to make sure you get each and every one of those and really you should simplify the fractions here you just you should take pi 12 plus four pi thirds and write as a single fraction uh, i'm not doing that here for the sake of time but be aware of that that's something you might be expected to do.